Hey everybody, it's Patrick Moore here, and today I've got a quick video on some of the common tax mistakes I see small business owners make. Now, I think some of this is going to be on the basic side, but they're just things I see often enough that I want to just make a quick video to go over some of the ones I see and some easy things you can do to fix them or avoid them in the first place if you're considering starting your own business. So before we jump into this, this is general information, not individual tax advice, but there are some good things to kind of be aware of follow and, and kind of think about as you go through your kind of starting and forming and, and, and running your own business. So when we talk about this, the reason I always want to bring this up is because a lot of times I also hear people being like, oh, I got to think about this in a tax con uh, context before they ever get the business off, up and running and off the ground. But when you start the business, the business should and will always come first, right? The taxes will come after you start making money, but your idea has to be solid your people have to be good, your product has to be good, and sometimes some of those details can fall by the wayside when that's the case. So I think almost every successful business probably hasn't dealt with all these tax details right off the bat. And that's okay, because that's probably why you are where you are. Now, what that means though, is maybe one year in, maybe two years in, maybe three years in, you get to the point where those little details that you ignored to get the thing going, can come back to bite you and maybe haunt you a little bit because you didn't get those things figured out. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I wanna tell you, you're not wrong for being in the position you're in if you are in this position, but it is something that can easily be fixed. So the first mistake I wanna go over is the most basic one. And I think everybody knows this one, but you know, it's like the best intentions of, you know, of, of anyone, right? It's like, oh, it won't happen to me. But I have seen it time and time again where somebody's business accounts and personal accounts are mixed into kind of one big mess and it becomes borderline impossible to figure out what's what. Now, there's two reasons that this happens. First, either you get your business income paid to your personal account, like let's say you started as a 1099, doing some freelance work, all that money just got deposited into your bank account and then you're like, well, hey, wait, what's, what's actually a business expense, what's business income and what's actually a personal expense? The second thing that I've seen is people who start a business account and then use it for personal expenses. Now, either one of those isn't great because what happens is a few different things. Well, like I said a moment ago, it's impossible to record your expenses properly. And what that leads to from a tax standpoint is one of two things. Either you underestimate your expenses, and that means that you are overpaying in taxes, or you start taking personal expenses as business expenses and that's no good because you may subject yourself to penalties if something happens in an audit. So neither one is good, even though they're two completely different issues. However, they are interconnected. The second is liability. So something that I think is a little detail I wanted to point out is that a lot of times when people start out, they may not have all of their legal documents in order. And you may think your LLC is protecting you, but unless those operating agreements and articles are drafted properly, I just want you to be aware of it as something to check because if you mix that personal and business, you might not be as legally protected as you think you are. And then finally, a lot of times I hear, and this is just way down the road, right? But I wanted to mention it when you're talking about mixing business and personal, I hear a lot of business owners say, hey, well, my business is my retirement. But you should be aware that you should still try and save some outside money for retirement because some of the statistics, and I think this is being generous, are that less than 20% of small businesses, meaning less than $10 million in revenue, are ever sold. So you need to be very careful about just mixing your entire life up with your business. There should be some limits to those mixtures. Now, Luckily, the way to fix this is simple. It just takes work. So that's something you can pay somebody to do for you or you can do it yourself. The first thing you need to do is you need to set up separate business bank and spending accounts, whether that's a credit card or just out of your bank account. Then you need to solely keep that business income tied into that account without touching it in your personal account. And then the third thing you need to do is not spend personal expenses from your business accounts. Now, to do all that, like I said, is easy. It just takes time. And then finally, what you need to do is use a bookkeeping software like QuickBooks, go in there, have some fun, run your P&L reports and really get a feel for the business and just keep it up to date. Maybe check it once a month and do all your bookkeeping at that point, maybe the first of every month. 
So it's all really doable and that's the most basic of the tax mistakes. However, I did want to go over a second one today and that is the home office deduction. So like we were talking about earlier, you start doing that freelance work, you work from home, you work on the side. Well, a lot of times you're working from home and you think about how can I get that home office deduction? Well, when you start, it's not a deduction you really have to pay for extra, right? So it's one that you really want and it is one of your larger deductions. However, a lot of times people get in trouble with this because the way the home office deduction works is that it's for spaces exclusively used for business purposes. And actually it's exclusively and regularly used for business purposes. So if you were to do this, and let's say you start working at your kitchen table, that space isn't regularly and exclusively used for business. So that's step one. And what happens is, is this is something the IRS is aware of, because this is one you can basically just do at the end of the year and put whatever number you want in there, right? But when they look at this, they are looking for abuses because it's supposed to be representing the space, the percentage of the home you use for business. Now, another thing I've seen people do is they've used done home, home improvements and tried to claim those home improvements for the business. I'll just tell you, save yourself a lot of time and don't do that, okay? A lot of time, money, potential audits, right? But this is a common way to get in trouble and just making sure that you have it's regularly and exclusively used for business purposes, you'll be better off for just having done it right in the first place. Now, another thing you can do is through the, you know, when you use your home for businesses, you can't actually depreciate a portion of your home for the business. But just remember, if you do that, that reduces the taxable exclusion when you sell your home. So if you're married and you sell your home, you can exclude up to $500,000 of gain on that sale out into the future. However, if you look at it and do this now and use that depreciation, that depreciation reduces that um, future exclusion. So how you do this the right way is you only claim space that's used exclusively for business purposes. Don't claim your home improvement projects and don't depreciate your home through your business unless you've done a lot of work and you know it's going to be right for you. Now, the final thing I want to go over today is just buy what I call the, the it's a write-off. Why not? It's just buying things you don't necessarily need for the business because it's it becomes your piggy bank, right? And when this becomes a problem is not when you actually need that F-150 for work. It becomes a problem when you don't need that F-150 for work and you bought your new car three years ago, but you want to go ahead and get a new one. So it becomes, okay, well, hey, I don't want to pay taxes on that. I might as well buy something before the end of the year. When you do that, you may be saving taxes, but it is a short-term decision that may not be good for you long-term. So when I talk about tax planning, I talk about tax planning that integrates into your financial plan. And the secret to your financial plan and long-term success is buying assets that go up in value rather than down in value, which a lot of those things can be. So what we're gonna do is I'll show you a quick example. It's November, let's say you poke your head up, you're like, hey, I got $60,000, what should I do with it? And you're in the highest tax bracket. Well, I did three options and you can look at this and kind of look at the various um, terms around them. But I said, okay, you buy a truck, you pay the taxes, bite the bullet, and invest that money in a stock market account, or you just put it in a 401k, right? So the 401k, spoiler alert, is going to be the best of both worlds because it gets both the tax deduction and the investment gains over the long term. But if you look at the second and third options here, the truck and the brokerage account, in year one, because you save so much money on, on uh, taxes, even though the truck goes down in value, you actually still have more money. The red bar is larger than the blue bar. However, look at year five as that truck continues to go down in value. By year five, even though you paid taxes, the brokerage account is significantly better, almost three times as large as the value of the truck. And as you go out, moving into the 20th year, you can see that once again, it's almost three times as large as the brokerage account. So when you think about what you're saving taxes for, is it because you don't wanna say it, you don't wanna pay money on taxes, or is it because you wanna put more money in your pocket? If you want to put more money in your pocket, like you did early when you're like, hey, I'm going to focus on the business. I won't care about that tax stuff. I'll worry about it later. This is the point where you have to say, okay, what's my goal? What can I do? And that's not to say there aren't tax saving strategies out there. We work with tons of them. But you need to keep your priorities straight. And that's tax mistake number three. You get lost in chasing that latest and greatest idea. And it negatively impacts your business. 
So for everyone who watched this video, I will offer a free strategy session. This is what we do. We do tax planning in the context of financial plans, and I'll be happy to have an introductory call at no cost or no obligation. And if you, any of this has rung a bell, please go do some of this on your own. If you don't want to talk with me, talk to QuickBooks, talk to whoever a bookkeeper, your accountant, and make sure you don't make any of these mistakes. So hope you have a good rest of the day and, you know, feel free to click the button to talk to an advisor and uh, we will be happy to chat with you. Have a good one.